Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Q programming. Today we will be covering operators in Python. Operators in very basic terms are the symbols or keywords that are used to tell the computer system to perform a specific operation on two things or possibly more. So since we are doing this in the context of Python, we will be doing everything that we do here in the context of Python. So basically there are six types of operators that Python offers us. The first type is arithmetic operators. So let's get into it. So arithmetic operators are the kind of operators that you would use in arithmetic operations. Like I've made a list here, you can see we have addition, we have subtraction, multiplication, division, exponent, flow division and modulus. So these four addition, subtraction, multiplication, division are actually pretty self-explanatory. If I write print 5 plus 8, write print 20 minus 9, if I write print 8 times 7, and if I write print 5 divided by 3, suppose. So if I print all of these, you will see what happens is it performs the arithmetic operation as you would expect it to, right? And remember, <clears throat> we've talked about data types in the previous video. so all of these three values are integers meanwhile this is a float why because i wrote 5 divided by 3 this will obviously not be a integer value it is 1.6 so that is why it becomes a float value right even if i do a, a, a division that actually doesn't have to be a float value it will be a float value so if i do 6 divided by 3 you will see it becomes 2.0 why is that because Python, anytime it sees the division operator, it will automatically make it a float, no matter what. So yeah, that's how these four basic mathematical operation works. And the same thing will work with exponents as well. If I do print 5 squared, it will print 25, as you can see it did right here. So this is all pretty self-explanatory and now let's talk about these two operators which are very specific to programming. These aren't actually seen in mathematics or in other places. So firstly we have flow division. What is flow division? Flow division returns the greatest integer value less than or equal to the number that comes when you divide the two. And that is what floor also means. Floor means the greatest value less than it. The greatest integer value less than it. Let me demonstrate with an example. If I write print 7 floor division 3. Now we know 7 divided by 3 is 2.3 something, but I put a double slash. This indicates floor division. So what that would do is it would pick up the value that comes after dividing 7 and 3 and it would return the integer which is less than or equal to that. So this will return 2. Same output with 8 flow division 3. That is because it's returning the greatest value less than or equal to it, which is an integer. And even if it is a valid division, like it'll just return the integer itself. No exception there. So that is just how flow division works, but then this will always return an integer, whereas this will always, uh, flow division will always return an integer, whereas ordinary division will always return a float value no matter what. This is one thing to keep in mind because handling data types correctly is very crucial when it comes to programming. Now let's talk about the modulus operator. The modulus operator is actually a really useful operator which tells you the remainder upon dividing two numbers. So if I have print 58 mod 7. So since I know that uh, 58 divided by 7 is 8.8 2 by 7, like in mixed fraction. So I know I will get 2 over here. How do I know that? Because whenever you divide these two numbers, what is the remainder? That is what this percentage sign returns. A, this means that this number divided by this number, whatever it comes out to be, that thing's remainder is what it will return. Let me demonstrate another example. Two. This will return one because we know five times two is 10. That means we have a remainder of one. 
that will print 1 and it will obviously print 0 if it is perfectly divisible by the number 10% 5 will print 0 why because it is perfectly divisible so these are the arithmetic operators that python has to offer us let's move on to assignment operators now assignment operators as the name suggests are used for assignment so you use it to assign values to variables right so if i say x equals to 5 what i have done here is i have assigned the value of 5 to a variable i just created calling it x so x is a, now it's inside my memory inside my computer's memory it's stored as a variable and it is containing the value 5 i have assigned 5 to it to that memory location so hence this is what the assignment operator actually does now there are different ways to assign values to a certain variable and those i have written right here so let me just explain in the reference to this one and all of these work the same way so if i say right now if i write print x this will simply print 5 but suppose i write x equals to x plus 10 now do not get confused with this and equality this does not state equality in programming sure it does in maths but not in programming this states assignment so this statement will seem not correct to a mathematician but it is perfectly valid in programming why is that because i have given the value of x plus 10 to x understand this very carefully x already has the value 5 but when i run this statement x equals to x plus 10 this means that i have assigned the value of x plus 10 to x so now x will have a value 10 more than its original value so i can print x now and you will see it prints 15 why because 10 got added to the original value of x and python offers a shortcut to do this by using plus equal to so instead of writing x equals to x plus 10 i can simply write x plus equals to 10 and this will have the same effect and not just with addition you can do this with subtraction multiplication division flow division exponent modulus all the arithmetic operators you can do all of this right so that is how assignment operators work and you can not only have to do the integer values you can like have two variables if i have x equals to y 5y equals to 10 or let's say 15 and if i say x plus equals to y what this means is x value is getting incremented by y that means its value is increasing by y so now x becomes 20 because y holds the value 15 and if i suppose decrement it that means i reduce x's original value and i write x minus equals to y it will become 5 minus 15 which is negative 10 and that will also print so this is how you can assign values to variables in python and these are some shortcut methods that you so that, so that you don't have to write the whole thing if i write x equals to x plus y or if i write x plus equals to y it is the same thing it will make no difference whatsoever it's just this is shorter and more used and actually a lot better as well to save time so also this uh, plus equal to operator can also be used with strings because it will then concatenate the strings let me give an example for example if i have x equals to welcome to and if i say x plus equals to q programming what's gonna happen is that it will concatenate x to this new string this is the same thing as saying i'll write that in the comment x equals to x plus q programming because see the addition operator will work for numbers in a different way and for strings in a different way in strings it will simply concatenate them it will join them together and i have been careful to put a space here so that it comes out correctly and it looks like a sentence so if i print x you will see it prints welcome to q programming how it did that is because it concatenated x to this new string that means it concatenated x in this new string and it assigned it to x itself and yeah that's about assignment operators let's now move on to comparison operators now as the name suggests these are used to compare one value to another 
For example, these are the comparison operators that Python offers us. We have as the two values are equal to each other, not equal to each other, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And these comparisons, the, <clears throat> the end result of the comparisons are stored in Boolean values. And just for reference, Boolean values can hold either true or false. It cannot hold any other value. There are only two permissible values for Boolean. And any statement that has a comparison operator in it will yield in a Boolean value at the end of it. Let me demonstrate with an example. If I have x equals to 10, and if I say x is greater than 5, print x is greater than 5. We know this is true. x is obviously much greater than 5. It is 5 more than 5. So this statement, since it is true, it is going to print true the way you would expect it to right here. And remember, Python has a convention to write capital T and capital F for Boolean values. So be careful when you use Boolean values in future to put the capital T and capital F. And you can even if you write a false statement that x equals to 12. And remember, the equal to in this is a double equal to. Why? It is to differentiate from assignment. Remember, if you write x equals to 12, let me show you. It will not do anything it will give an error because x equals to 12 is assigning this is an assignment operator this will not work what will work is putting a double equal to the double equal to signifies that one value equals another value and that will tell you if it's true or false since x is obviously not the same as 12 it will print false similarly we have other operators like not equal to, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And remember, when you're using these last two, you need to put the equal to after whatever you want. Like greater than or equal to, that means you put the greater than sign and then put the equal to right after it. Right? So I can say print x is greater than or equal to 10. This we can know is true because x is equal to 10. So it will print true for that. I'll just comment that and even if I have a value greater than 10 like 16 this will still print true because x is still greater than or equal to 10. Now the not equal to is going to do the exact opposite of what the equal to does. So if I have x equals to 16 and I say x is not equal to 10 this will again print true. Why is that? Because 16 is not equal to 10 obviously. And that makes it a true statement overall. But if I write x is not equal to 16, suppose, this will become false because x is actually equal to 16. So this statement that x is not equal to 16 becomes false and accordingly it's assigned the Boolean value of false. So this is, these are just some things to keep in mind while using comparison operators because these conditional statements that I have written here, x is not equal to 16, x is greater than 5, you can write as many conditional statements as you want and you can use as many variables as you want also. If I have x equals to 16, y equals to 10, print x is greater than y, is going to print true. So knowing how to use conditional statements is a very important thing and we will cover it when we talk about conditional statements and loops. So for now, this is it and comparison operators, this is almost very self-explanatory. You just need to understand what Boolean values are. That means it can either be true or false. All right, now let's move on to logical operators. Now logical operators are used for conditional statements as you would know. And there are three types of logical operators that Python offers, not or an and. So, and these are by the way based on logic gates. So if any of you know logic gates, you will find this easier, but even if you don't, no problem. I'm explaining it all the way. So, what does the not do? It opposes the input. Whatever the input is, suppose the input is true, it'll print false. So if I say x equals to true, I have given it the Boolean value of true. Remember, if you put it in strings, it is not gonna be the same. If I do this, this is not a Boolean value, it's a string, like you can see it type x and if I say y equals to true print y wait print type y and up here also print type c 
See, the first one is a string and the second one is BOL, which stands for Boolean. So to understand the difference, you cannot put quotation marks around true. It has to be just written the way it is. It's not a string. That's the only thing you should be careful of because this is a very common mistake. Anyway, so if I have x equals to true and I say print not x, it'll print false. It will basically oppose the input. Whatever statement is here, it will just write the exact opposite of it. So suppose, let me demonstrate with the example with an actual condition. If I have x equals to 15 and I say not x is greater than 10. This I think you can infer will be false. Why will this be false? Because x is greater than 10 is a true statement and the not is going to just oppose it. So if it's true, we return with a false. So that is how not works or an and. Or will work when either one of the statements provided out of the multiple statements is true. Just the way you would expect it to work in an English language. Like x is greater than 15, x is greater than 10, or x is greater than 100. So as you can see, x is here obviously greater than 10, so this statement is true. So it doesn't matter if this statement is true or false because this statement we know x is greater than 100 is obviously false but x is greater than 10 happens to be true. So ultimately it will print true because all statement works that way that any one statement out of the ones given must be true. So it says x is greater than 10 or x is greater than 15. If either one of these is true, collectively this is true. But if I replace this with an and, as the name suggests, all of the statements. You can imagine that, that all of the statements must be true. That means x is greater than 10 and x is greater than 100. This is obviously not the case here. So now it becomes false. So you have to be very careful when using or or and and you need to understand how to use them. All right, now let's talk about identity operators. Now these can be easily confused with equality, but they are not. This is when two things are stored in the same memory location. That is when it is going to work about is and is not. That means that if two things are stored in the same memory location, then if I use is, it will be true. Let me give an example. If I have a list x equals to 1, 2, 3 and another list with the same contents, just understand what I'm saying. And I give a third variable z, which is x. Now, if you like, I'll show you one thing. If I say id x, print id x and print id y, print id z. So id, what this will do is it will tell me the exact memory location where this list is saved in my dictionary. What's the memory location called? So these three random numbers, yes, this is what memory is. This is a coded way to tell where it is saved, right? So now you can see x and z have the same memory location, although y has a different memory location. Even though y has the exact same contents, it is stored somewhere else. So how we'll do this is if I say, now what the is operator does is it will simply tell you whether two things have the same memory location or not. If I write print x is z, it'll print true because they both have the same memory location. I just showed you their IDs. But if I print, x is y this will now print false why did this print false because x and y even though they have the same contents are not saved at the same memory location and just to show you why this is different from equality if i say x equals y this is true yet again because they have the same contents obviously the lists in themselves are equal but on the other hand x is not y because it is not in the same memory location. This is what the is operator does. It tells whether it is the same object. Same object meaning is it saved in the same memory location or not. And assigning z equals x ultimately means that I'm giving them both the same memory location. This is how this assignment operator actually works. So this is a little bit about how memory location works and this is why identity operators work this way. And is not, as you can imagine, will do the exact opposite. So if I say x is not y, and now you might have understood that x is obviously not y, because 
they are not in the same memory location this will print true but if i say print x is not z this will print false because x and z have the same memory location this is all about memory location the is and is not operator it just talks about whether they are the same object or not all right now let's talk about membership operators so membership operators tell whether a certain substring or a certain element is a member of a sequence or not suppose if i have this sequence which is a string hello world we discussed this in data types that there are three types of sequence uh, data types we have strings tuples and lists so this hello world is a sequence which is string so if i say print h in x and if i let me just do this to demonstrate the concept x so now what this means is it's going to tell me whether capital h this substring is present in the main string or not and similarly it's going to tell me if this is present in the main string or not and the main string is hello world this what i've highlighted right now so if i run this you will see this prints true because capital h is the first alphabet in the string but small h is not present it's visibly not present and i can do something like check if hello is in x this is obviously there so without a doubt this will also print true now but if i write something which is a substring that is again not present in the main string like hellos which is obviously not there it will return back false so that is uh, how membership operators work and these will come in handy when you do big projects so yeah this is how membership operators work and not in will do the exact opposite of what in does so if i say small h let me wait yeah let me do small h not in x obviously small h is not in x the string which is hello world small h is absent from it so this will print true because i have put a not in front of it so not in ultimately means that this string is not there in the main string the same logic can be applied for lists as well for example if i have a list of three numbers say 1 2 3 and if i write print 1 in x and if i write print 5 in x you will see that the first one prints true whereas the second one prints false why because 1 is in x it is the first element whereas 5 is not in x so this membership operator can be used for sequences which contain values right which contain the set of values so at the end of it you can just check whether those values actually exist inside the given sequence or not whether they are there in the sequence and not in will do the exact opposite of in so if i write one not in x let me delete that that will print false because one is actually present in x So that has been my time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share and subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to stay tuned for more courses and videos we'll be uploading. All the course material is available on our website. Link is in the description for below. Thank you for watching.